Good day, everybody. It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, episode 122 for July the 6th, 2021. And hope everybody's doing well and you've made something great this week. So behind me, this is a work in progress. This is called, well, the pattern is called um, Out Back. And you can see that it's made up of a panel that has these old fashioned caricatured like uh, outhouses. Now, when I first saw this uh, panel, I poo-pooed it and moved on because I'm really not into novelty kinds of fabrics. But then I came back and I saw the line of fabric that goes with it. And there's toilet paper and old newspaper articles and things like that. And I thought, well, maybe I am interested. And there was a pattern for making a table runner or I don't know what you call it, but they put it on the back of a toilet tank, kind of like a table runner for a toilet. Uh, toilet tank um, so I thought I might make the table runner but when I got studying the uh, pattern and once I got the fabric I kind of thought do you really want to put outhouses no matter how funny they are as a centerpiece on your table and I thought not really and also I don't do table runners for toilet tank backs bad experiences or bad memories connected with those and all I'll say is there were a few of my friends when I was uh, a little kid and in their house their mothers had these kind of things on their toilet tanks and the houses I went into they looked like they kind of needed to be washed well you know what I mean kind of it's just gross so anyways I decided nah, let's make it into just a fun little lap quilt just have some fun with the pat with the fabrics and stuff like that so that's what I've done here very simple just basically a set of borders now it's probably hard to show in the video but the border that runs out here is actually made up of flying geese and um, I haven't quilted it yet I am going to quilt it I'm going to use it for practice with free motion quilting I think that's where I'm going to go because you know I really don't care because <laughs> this is not the kind of quilt really that um, yeah, isn't much better for um, simply doing practicing free motion quilting on because I don't think I'd give it to somebody. Um, they'd say, take a look at it and go, whoa, what a crappy quilt. Okay, there's a pun in there, right? And that's what I'm going to name it, the crappy quilt. Um, or maybe I should call it the crapper quilt. Whichever, you get the point. Okay, well, I suppose I could have said it's kind of a shitty project. Okay, enough puns, enough puns. So, that is on there as a, a next project to get quilted. But in the meantime, what else have I been working on? Well, I'm thinking Christmas. Who doesn't? It's July. Don't we all think, aren't we all getting into the Christmas spirit? Well, maybe not, but maybe we should be as creators because you know, suddenly it creeps up on us. I mean, Christmas is only five months away. Did I scare you yet? Um, so I like to get an early start on things. Um, I make Christmas, potential Christmas gifts. Let's call them that. I don't know if I'll give these things to somebody, but I like to have them on hand. And I do have a, some ideas uh, for making gifts for various people this year at Christmas. Um, the reason I hesitate when I talk about Christmas gifts is because basically I don't give any, I don't get any. Um, don't feel sad for me. <laughs> Nothing to feel sad about. It's, it's okay because I'm very difficult to buy for because if I want something, I go out and I get it. Um, I don't need a lot of junk gifts and things like that. Uh, my family we no longer really exchange gifts within my family and my family's getting a little thin these days when it comes to Christmas. You know, my brother and his family live out in BC. Um, so there's just really my sister and her uh, two kids and husband. And of course my mother's in the nursing home and my dad's no longer with us. So why am I talking about all of this? Well, it's just that we don't get into giving Christmas gifts anymore. Um, not even the kids, the kids have grown up. Um, you know, my nephews and nieces are, are adults now. So, yeah. And Walter and I don't bother much with that because, again, we buy whatever we want when we want it kind of a thing. Um, it does make Christmas Day a little less exciting, but we're used to that now. And I'm rambling. So let's get back to this. So I 
looked for some embroidery designs. Um, I looked for gnomes because last year I had some fabric that had gnomes on it and I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, until that point I was not into gnomes. But now I'm sort of into gnomes, uh, at least when it comes to fabric and embroidery patterns. So I bought online three fun little gnome patterns that I've been stitching out. And I'm stitching them out on gnome fabric. So there's one. I think that's called Gnome Trio. And then this one's called, oh, I see I have a little loose thread on this one, but that's okay. This is called uh, Gnome Stack. And this one's called Gnomes in a Retro Truck. And you'll notice I, I've put them on fairly large blocks because my idea here is when I figured this out, I'm going to make these into table runners. Uh, probably three designs. I might go off and see if I can find a fourth design that I like. Um, something about even numbers, although you shouldn't have even numbers and things. It's more eye-catching if you go with odd numbers, so I have been told. Um, anyways, I'm going to make these into a table runner, and this may become the prototype for making multiple ones of these. I'm also going to make table runners out of this, these patterns that I uh, downloaded, or these files for embroidery that I downloaded. Now, I didn't download all of these. This is a complete collection. Uh, I think I downloaded uh, four of them. And uh, these are kind of, I call them elegant Santas, as you can see on here. They're a little different. They're not caricatures. They're more art pieces. And they look really good on a dark background. So I have ordered some Christmas fabric that's in a dark charcoal um, which is not a traditional Christmas color but I think these will show up very nicely on that and again table runners maybe table runners maybe some napkins I don't know to go with the table runners lots of ideas you know the problem is and this is why you have to start early all of these kind of things when you get involved in embroidery take a lot of time like those uh, known ones I showed you take over an hour to sew out so, you know, three of them is three hours worth of your time and then putting it all together and whatnot, it takes a little bit of time. So we'll see, but I'm getting an early start now and I have some other ideas in the back of my head too. I want to make another Christmas quilt this year. Um, yeah, I need another Christmas quilt, but I just like making them and I like Christmas fabric. Um, I haven't, f I think I do have a design and I put it aside so I wouldn't forget and guess what I forgot I'll have to look in my binder of Christmas patterns to see if I can find it there anyways I am rambling today I don't know why but I am okay so I've just started another project um, those of you that may be coming to join me for craft and chat or Stevens creative birthday pat ash this week um, will probably see me working on this during that time and I'm just looking around to find out where did I put it oh yeah here it is okay now I don't have any of the pieces together yet I've just yesterday I spent uh, cutting the fabric for what I need it this is a Missouri star quilt um, pattern it's called um, what is it called it's called home is where the quilts are and uh, it's, as I said, by, it's in Block Magazine, Volume 8, Issue 3, 2021, which I think is the most recent issue of Block Magazine. And do check out Missouri Star Quilts Block Magazine. Um, you can often buy them in, in soft cover format at your local quilt store, but you can go online and you can order digital copies or get the physical copy. Um, just check out their website. It's, it's all there for you. Um, and you can buy them as individual copies. That's actually what I do right now. Um, or as a yearly subscription or even a monthly subscription. Um, so here it is. Down there on the corner. It's all those little houses and trees and things. And I just think that's really fun. And I've wanted to make a quilt for quite a while that has like houses on them. Because I kind of like them. Um, I think they make really cool wall hangings this one final size is 71 by 82 and a half so that's a pretty large wall hanging but nevertheless i've got my fabrics all sorted out for this um, i'm using a layer cake of uh, 
looking around for it and I can't find it. Uh, I'm not sure who the, oh, here it is here. Okay, let's just take a quickie look, shall we? Um, yeah, I've got things already cut up here. Well, there goes my organization. But this, these are the layer cake, I'm dropping them, that I'm using. Blues, purples, shades of that, lights and darks. Um, I think it's gonna look really nice when I do get it done. Um, so, I'm still cutting the fabric up for that one. I have it all cut and ready to go, and then I'll start sewing it. And I don't think it's very difficult, so, which is good. <laughs> okay, so what else have I been making? Well, <laughs> guess what? Pin cushions. Oh, are you surprised? So I found a 3D pattern or model for these cute little um, look like woven baskets. So I used my copper filament and I made this. And you can see the woven pattern in it. And it makes a nice size pin cushion, but I also made a mini. There's a little one. So yeah, I have a ton of pin cushions. Now I think it's time to decide on the ones I really like the best. And they're going to be Christmas presents too. So they take a while to print. So yeah, start now. Um, and I made some purchases. So let me have some coffee. Let me make some room on my table here in front of me. Move my coffee well out of the way because I'll spill it. And so I got my order from uh, Cottage Quilting. This was is a Canadian company. Um, I don't think I've reviewed them yet, but I will be soon. Um, I want to see what it was like to order things from them. Um, I did it. I found them on the Canadian National Quilters uh, virtual site during the show. And uh, I checked them out. And they've got a lot of really interesting stuff and they had a lot of patterns and things too and especially for bag making and those bags you know the ones by annie uh, and i love those bags um so now i'm kind of in a bag making craze of course <laughs> when will i get to these i have no idea i say that all the time don't i so show you the patterns that i bought this one's called the Mini Charm Carry All. Now this is not a uh, by Annie pattern, but I thought, you know, it's got pockets on the inside. I thought it would look pretty cool. Something called the Diana Wallet. Now this is more something for a lady to put in her purse, but I thought, you know, something like that could make a nice Christmas gift too for like my sister or my niece as well. Um. Now this is a by Annie uh, bag. It's called Running With Scissors Tool Case. Um, so you can see I'm thinking here I, that this would be good to when you go, when we go back to classes and go to retreats for keeping your things in. And the by Annie pa patterns are great. They're so detailed and there's usually videos that accompany them. And I also got this, this was a freebie. Um, I think this was freebie or did I pay for it? I may have paid for it. It's a project sheet, but it's for the Peacekeeper project bag, which is just a simple little mesh bag. But again, something that you can keep your tools in, I think would be all great in conjunction with a large tote um, for carrying the stuff you need for a retreat or for a sewing class. They also talk about using um, a, a liner for your, like a stabilizer when you make these bags. Uh, you know, it keeps them a little nicer, a little stiffer. And I usually use Pellon uh, Decker Bond. But I found out from this particular website that there's another product that is the same as Decker Bond. It's made by Pellon, but if you're familiar with Decker Bond, usually if you fold it up or whatnot, you have permanent creases in it, which you just even an iron doesn't really get them out completely. And it can, could give you some grief when you're using it as a stabilizer in a bag because it could make your fabric wrinkle as well. But they have this other stuff by Pellon and it is called, what is it called? It's called Decoville Light Iron-On Stabilizer. And this is what it looks like. 
and apparently these wrinkles in it come right out when you are fusing it. So I bought, I think, two meters of it, and um, I forget what it cost. Actually, I can probably tell you what it cost. No, I can't tell you what it cost. Um, but I did buy two meters of it. So I'm going to try that out on the next bag that I make. I also got some of this by Annie fold over elastic. Now I have some more of this that I ordered as well. Um, apparently this is really good when you're using mesh in a bag um, for the edges of it instead of using like fabric to you know finish off the edges. So we'll see. I got some of that to try. And they send along this cute little pin that says need to sew. Looks like a little miniature license plate. That was a freebie. That's nice. I like freebies. Oh, and the last thing that I bought. Wait, is there? I think I'm missing a pattern. Oh, this is interesting. I gotta check my order here. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah, Poppins bag. So what did I do with that pattern? It must be here somewhere. Because this is called the Poppins bag and this is the frame you need to put inside it. But it's a really large like carpet bag kind of a thing. You know, like the Mary Poppins bag opens up wide at the top and you get, you know, all kinds of things in it. But I did order the pattern. Okay, that and that. And I'm not sure what I have done with the pattern. I have to look for it. Anyways, it's bothered me. I'll be right back. Well, I just learned a very important lesson. Double check your orders when they first come in. Don't just put them down on a table and come back to them later. Because definitely did not get the pattern for this Poppins bag. Um, so I've just sent them off an email to let them know that that was missing in my package and we'll see what kind of service we get from that. In fact, that was the one pattern that I wanted the most out of the ones that I ordered from them. Go figure, right? I also got my order from the Jelly Roll shop and I don't believe that I've interv or interviewed, you know what I mean, reviewed that one yet, but I will be soon. Um, I bought this pattern. I saw this pattern it's called Autumn Steam Quilt and uh, it was on their site and I thought that was kind of interesting. Again, it's got a panel. It uses a panel and uh, suddenly I'm just into panels these days. I don't know why, but I did buy the panel from the Jelly Roll shop and here's what the panel looks like. And I probably can't get it all in the shot, but there you go. It's of, you know, old steam engines kind of a thing in fall colors. And so I thought it would make a nice um, either wall hanging or small quilt, uh, you know, for autumn. And let me get myself back on my perch. I bought the fabric that go with it. And I bought two meters of each, which is overkill, but that's okay. I like leftovers. Um, so I got this, which has these little train ticket kind of things on it. Um, then there's this outline one. It looks like a blueprint sort of of trains and engines. Got it upside down. Um, then they had uh, this one with the railroad tracks kind of a thing. And another one with uh, train cars. Now, all of these are fabrics that are called for in the um, pattern. And then, of course, some backgrounds and blenders. Now, there was one fabric I could not get that they listed on there from them. And it was one that had sort of a light geometric design to it. So, I went looking and I found this one, which is not from the same line. Um, in fact, I didn't even buy it from the Jelly Roll shop. I bought it from somewhere else and, oh, at Annie's, which is a, a, a local quilting store to me, uh, physical store. 
So I thought this would work in place of the one that they called for. So I've got all the fabrics right here ready to go to make this and it's in a project box and yeah one day <laughs> I will get to it as well. So I just thought I'd give you a show you that too. Okay so um, this week I'm going to show you how to use this little tool which I showed you last week. It's called the third hand binding folder clip and basically it's a little tool that you use to make binding for a quilt. I have used it and I love it. It works really well. So I thought I'd show you how to use it. So I'm going to insert a little video clip I made of me using this right here. So I'm going to show you how to use this handy little device that I bought recently. And this is called the third hand binding folder clip. And what it does is it allows you to take a two and a half inch strip or two and a quarter inch strip of fabric and pull it through this little device and it will fold it for you as you run your iron over it so you create very quickly your binding for a quilt. So I'll show you how this works. So I have my ironing board out and I have attached this little device right here to the end of the ironing board and it attaches very easily. There's a little butterfly nut on the end here and it makes this little piece go up and down so it's adjustable and there's a, a little non-slip ring on the inside of this to hold it secure. So you just fit it onto the end and tighten that up. And then you take your strip of fabric and just fold it at one end in half and feed it into the little slot here at one end. Now you may need to use a pin to pull this through to start and there's a little slot up here in the top for that so you just take your pin place it in here and pull it through okay so now you pull a little bit of it out take your iron just place it on the top get it started pull it a little bit more and now what you can do is and my iron isn't on. <laughs> so let me just get my iron turned on. So now that I have my iron plugged in, it helps to have a hot iron. As I was saying, you can just put your iron down on this, get it started, and then simply pull your strip through. Now, of course, you're not going to want to leave your iron sitting down there for too long because, you know, you could burn your cover on your ironing board. But look how easy that is. And there we go. I have a perfect binding strip for my quilt. It's just that easy with it. So yeah, I think this was a worthwhile investment. Cost? Cost me about $20 Canadian, $19.99. Um, I did look online to see if I could find the uh, model for this to print it out on my own 3d printer but i didn't have any luck so yeah i think it's worth it's maybe a little overpriced but i think it's worth uh investing in even if it is 20 bucks so something new something that i think works very effectively you might want to try it out that came from purplehobbies.com so as I said, that tool, as you can see, works really, really well. Uh, it might be a little overpriced because it's a 3D printed part. It was $19.99 um, and I bought it from Country Concessions. However, you can get it directly from the manufacturer, which is known as uh, Purple Hobbies. And I think it's just purplehobbies.com. So if you're interested in picking one of those up, you can check out that and see if you can find it. Okay. So that takes us to the subscribers quilt of the week. I'm getting a little thin on these. Uh, a few people have sent me some more things, so that'll keep me going for the next couple of weeks. But I would love to get your uh, pictures and little blurb about the projects you're working on, whatever they may be. Um, because I think it's really interesting to see other people's stuff, you know, 
instead of just showing my stuff all the time. So all the information about how you uh, contact me to send me things is in the show notes below. So let's go to this week's subscribers quilt and it's by Judith Letson. This week's subscriber quilts and something a little extra come from Judith Letson. And Judith says, hello, Stephen. You asked for photos of things we do. The first one is a quilt from a challenge of CQA on rows. You were supposed to do a row of quilting you normally stayed away from. I did this and learned what I liked and what won't happen again. The second is a pattern from Missouri Star that I did for spring. Winter was way too long. The next two are oil paintings I did. When not quilting, I knit and paint. Thanks so much for your videos and taking the time to share your life. Um, so, Judith, these are actually breathtaking. I, I love your um, oil paintings. I really wish I could paint. And your quilts are lovely too. So thank you so much for sharing them with all of us. So you see, I don't just take uh, quilts. I'll take anything that's art related, craft related. Okay, so that takes me down to the links that are in the show notes, a couple that I want to highlight. Uh, there are two events coming up this week. It's going to be a busy week. There's my monthly craft and chat. We have that first Wednesday of every month. Starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, runs till approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's an opportunity for you to come work on whatever projects you might be working on, have some friendly conversation if you wish. And it's just very relaxing, very calming. We don't have any drama. Uh, so think about joining us. Um, there are some, I have some that have come many times over, so they're regulars, but it's open to anybody. So the Zoom link for that is in the show notes. There's also a link for my big event this Saturday, July the 10th, Stephen's Creative Birthday Bash. In a way for me to celebrate my birthday, which is a few days after that date. Um, and so we're having a little, I guess you would call it a mini retreat. Um, very informal, no need to pre-register. The link is there. It starts at 9 a.m. Uh, my time, Eastern Standard Time, and runs until about 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, I realized that 9 o'clock start time for me here on the in the East is probably a little bit early for those of you on the West Coast, but that's okay. You can come anytime you wish, drop in, stay as long as you want, um, and essentially we're going to work on our projects talk a little bit. I don't have anything formally structured for this, not like I did with the retreat in March. Um, however, I do have a couple little video presentations that I might uh, put up one in the morning, one in the afternoon, just to break the day up a little bit with some variety. And um, yeah, I don't know if there's going to be any other surprises or not, but it's just a good time um, for me. Yeah, it's all about me. Um, <laughs> it's just I will feel an urge to have a little retreat. Um, so if you're of the same mind, then please join me this coming Saturday. Uh, and the link for it is in the show notes. Okay. And there's a link for latest uh, So Chatty. And that one we're doing in two parts because it started out with we were looking around at things that we thought most sewers don't realize that they have like that are helpful for them. So tools and hacks, things like that. And as we got working on this list, we got over 30 items. So far too many to do in one episode. So we've split it up into two. So the first episode is already uh, posted. It's already up on my channel, but the link is here for it. And later this week, Walter and I will be completing the second part of that. And there is a link to this week's YouTube channel. Now, this week's YouTube channel is by also the person that I have interview, interviewed this week as well. So, double whammy. And there is a link to a pattern that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. And the fabric store that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. And of course, my favorite fabric stores are all listed in the show notes as well. So... That takes us to uh, the YouTube of the week. And this is done by, and it's called Ms. Linda Melky. I hope I'm saying her name correctly, her last name. You'd think I would know since I just finished interviewing her. And yes, this YouTube channel is by the same person 
that I have done an interview with. And it was a great interview. Um, but more about that in a moment. But let's talk about uh, her YouTube channel. Well, I'm trying something new here on my when I put this together. Um, usually I just talk to you about a YouTube channel. But now what I thought I would do is I'll couple it with uh, actual um, visual of the channel. Uh, so I've made another little video clip. And I've made video clips for a lot of things uh, on this week's presentation, on this week's episode. And I think I'm going to carry on with that because I think it's um, a little better than me just talking at you, the talking head kind of thing. Okay, So I'm going to insert Ms. Linda Melke's uh, YouTube channel review here. This week's uh, YouTube channel that I want to feature is by the person that I interviewed this week as well, Ms. Linda Maliki. Melky. I think that's how you say Linda's name. I hope I'm correct. Sorry, Linda. And uh, her website is relatively new, but I thought I should give it a shout out because there's a lot of really interesting things on here. So you can see on her home page that she has her latest videos here, but let's just take a look at her video list. And she has quite a few on here, and it looks like she started this about nine months ago. So for nine months, she's got a lot of videos and she's got quilting tips uh, about stars, about using four and five inch squares, uh, basting. I watched the one on basting and I found it very, very helpful. Um, she has a lot of various things, making nine patches, things like that. So I think there's a lot here to be uh, you know, very useful for you. Um, so, yeah, I would suggest strongly that you check out Ms. Linda Malky. And this goes along really well with the interview I did with her this week. And that takes us to the pattern that I want that off my vision board that I want to talk about today. This one I got for free, but I have since found that you can buy it. It was a special uh, during the Canadian National Quilt uh, Show. So that's how I got it for nothing. Um, I haven't made it yet, but it has stars in it. And anything that has stars in it appeals to me. So it's called Pop Star Runner. It's downloadable. You can buy it. And I've got a link to the site where you can buy it from. And I think it's a very inexpensive. I think it's like $1.95 or something like that for the pattern. Um, it's not very many pages. It's only two. Two or three. No, there's three pages. Um, but it looks very easy to put together. And you know, I was talking about Christmas before. You put this with Christmas fabric. And I think it would make a wonderful Christmas table runner. Note to self. I just thought about that. Hmm. Okay, another design. So, um, that's one that I definitely want to make very soon. All right, so that takes me to the little teaser about Linda, who I just mentioned with the YouTube channel and this person I interviewed this week. So I'm going to put my little teaser in right here. Well, I, I don't know how I do what I do, but I, I can, I usually just take a bag of fabric that somebody's given me, dump it on the floor and start pulling things out right? and match it up with other things that I've got. I would, I would call you then an, uh, an intuitive artist. Uh, I think that would be a good term and probably a certain amount of experimentation as well. Experimentation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm not that's why you're an artist. Labels. I'm not good with labels and I don't really um, look at labels on clothes. Like I couldn't right. tell you, and I couldn't tell you what brand of fabric something is unless I've yeah. actually bought it. I know Northcott because I, I have met um, people who work at Northcott. Yeah. And you can't get more Canadian in fabric than Northcott. Yes. So do check that out. Um, now, I want to criticize one of my quilts. Now, this is one I made not too long ago, so you may remember seeing it. But now I want to kind of pull it apart, and it's the one that I called Circle in a Square. And it's one that I used the 
uh, a special attachment to my sewing machine for making circles. Um, it looks like it's appliqued, but it's not. So here's my review of that. This week's quilt of mine that I'm going to critique is one that you have seen before. I think I showed this when I first got it done a few months ago, but now as it's sat for a while, I thought it might be time to critique this. Now, I do like this quilt, and I'll tell you why. It's the method that I used. This was all made from scraps and a charm pack. And you see the circles that are in the square. I actually did those using the um, sewing tool, uh, the circular sewing tool in my sewing machine. So although if you saw this close up, those would look like they're appliqued with a satin stitch all the way around. Um, I actually did them with that tool. And then I just built out from the center with the other scraps that I had. And this whole line of fabric is one from the Stonehenge collection. And so I thought I always was very much attracted to it. So why not use up the scraps? So you can see the border pieces are a little bit unconventional in this as well in the way that I designed them and I was just playing around with the layout of strips. Now as for the quilting on this, uh, it looks like I did all uh, walking foot quilting and I used the serpentine line uh, with this. So there isn't any free motion but nevertheless it still works out. Now it really isn't wonky on the binding or the borders. It's just the way I have it hung up uh, that makes it look that way. It did come out perfectly straight. Um, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, I think it worked out well. I think there might be a couple of tucks here and there which are not easy to spot unless I point them out to you and I'm not going to do that. Um, but that was before I started using my combination of spray basting and pin basting. So if I had done that on this one, I think I would have had more success in keeping tucks away from the finished product. But yeah, this is one that's unique to me. It's my own design and I'm really pleased with it. So that takes me to my review of a quilting store online. This one is one that I found uh, during the Canadian National Quilt Show. It's called Fabric Snob. Now, I have not ordered anything from them, but what's kind of appealing about this is they have fabric not just for quilters, but for garment makers as well. And according to what Walter has told me, finding online stores that have fabric for garment makers is a bit of a chore. So I have done a complete review of this online store for you and I did it this time in video format so that you can actually see the website as I talk about it. So this week I thought I'd try something new in my review of online fabric stores. I thought that I should actually show you what their websites look like and you can see my process for going through and evaluating them. So this week I'm featuring the Fabric Snob. Now the first thing when it comes up, I like to look at how easy it is to navigate. And up here in the top, they do have three little bars and that seems to open up a menu and we can get a very quick look at how they have organized uh, their website. So we have uh, round three 2021 holiday slash winter pre-order AO pattern printing. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, ever sewn sewing machines. Okay so they sell sewing machines. I know that. They have of course mass making uh, supplies. They have fabric subscriptions. Uh, they have knits, quilting cottons, apparel. So I know that they're not just quilting fabrics, but they're also um, a garment uh, fabric store. Uh, they have something called mystery packs, which we're gonna take a look at. That's intriguing. Of course, they have notions. They have samples and swatches. They have gift cards, uh, additional shipping insurance. That's interesting and then all their products. And of course you can join and log in and down here they're showing you a sign up and earn uh, snobs. A thousand snobs. I guess they have a rewards program as well. Um, now I have not ordered anything from them yet 
So we'll just return here to this page. You'll notice up here too, they are a Canadian store. I believe they're located in BC, but we'll check that out in a second. But they do have everything in Canadian dollars, which is kind of nice. Although it looks like you can pull down this menu and you can switch over to a variety of different currencies, US dollar, Euro, British pound, Australian dollar, etc. So that's kind of nice. So what I also like to do is when I want to find out about the store, um, if it's not in their menu, if you go down the screen to the bottom cursor or scroll down, you usually find something like this at the bottom of most pages. And it's sort of like a quick menu guide. So here we have all kinds of different information, but I want to know about them. So I'm going to go here about us and we'll see what comes up. And they say, our Riverton warehouse is located on Treaty 2, the traditional territory of the Anishabeg Cree, OG Cree, Dakota, and Dene people, and on the homelands of the Métis Nations. Okay, this is interesting. So this uh, is talking about the native connection here as well. Now, this is not unusual for a lot of Canadian websites now because basically we're trying to make amends for, you know, hundreds, hundreds of years of keeping our Indigenous people, um, you know, treating them like second class or third class citizens. So here they are acknowledging that. That is a very politically correct thing to do right now. Uh, so they go on about that. What else do they tell us? Oh, they have a family picture. So, you know, that's always nice. It lets you see the people behind the group. She, and the owner says, my name is Lindsay and I'm a mama to my sweet boys. Uh, we live out in the country on a turkey breeder farm. Okay, so this is a, definitely a mom and pop kind of thing. The fabric snob started as a pursuit for the perfect fabric for cloth diapers for my first son. That's interesting. Frustrating with lack of availability in Canada, I, I decided to open up our online store in February of 2014 in our humble basement. In May 2016, we opened our first retail location in Riverton, uh, MB, which is now our local house. MB. Okay, I'm stupid. I think they mean Manitoba. Yeah, I think that's right. That's the short form for Manitoba. I just, okay, I'm a dummy. Uh, we opened a retail location in Winnipeg in June 2021. Okay, so they're in Winnipeg. I am blown away with how this little basement business has grown and I'm excited for what we have in store. Happy shopping. Okay, and then there's contact information, which is good. So let's, so we know now something a little bit about their history, which I always like to check out because it gives me a, a, a flavor for what this, um, you know, this kind of thing, what they're all about. Okay, they have our missions and values, uh, store hours. So they actually have a physical store, which is good. And uh, they have their shipping policies down here. Well, let's just take a look since we're here about what that is going to cost. So they offer a flat rate of $14.99 and free shipping over $200 before taxes to Canada and, and the U.S. Okay, that's interesting. All right, a lot of places don't do both Canada and the U.S. Um, it's, it says it's available, the free shipping on single orders only. Add-ons are not eligible for free shipping if the original order did not qualify for free shipping. Not sure what they're talking about there, but I guess I'm assuming that they, you know, it's when you make an order, that's it. That's what you get it on. If you decide you want to add some things to that order before they shipped it, you're, and it brings you over the $200, they're not going to apply that. They do have insurance. Our flat rate to Canada includes $100 insurance if your package is lost or stolen or damaged. If you would like additional insurance, please check us, check, please choose it at checkout. Okay. Uh, just out of curiosity, I want to see what that additional insurance means. Uh, so, so for an extra hundred dollars, the coverage is two dollars and twenty-five cents Canadian. That is something I have never seen before on uh, on an online store. And then they ship. They talk about standard things about letter mail shipping, express post shipping, rush service, international shipping. So it's all there. It's all detailed for you, and that's very good. Okay, let's go and check out their fabric prices. So let's go down to quilting cottons. 
and they've got solids and bundles and pre-cuts and fat quarters and quilt kits and then they seem to list them by company so funny Canadian company I do not see anything by Northcott hmm since Northcott is a Canadian company looks like they're dealing here with a lot of American companies okay um, that doesn't impress me much let's just click on all and let's see what they've got how this is set up um, they do show how much they have left of different fabrics only five left only two left that I like so I know right off the bat how much they have I don't have to look at that and be told it's out of stock when I place the order so let's see twenty dollars Canadian that looks like the standard price for most things uh, there's some things cheaper than that then oh okay well that's half meter Wow oh that's okay I, this is 108 so it's wide back fabric okay so let's go to the rest all right cotton half a meter 1025 950 nine dollars 1025 1025 825 so it looks like for a meter of fabric they range uh, on average anywhere from about 1650 up to about twenty dollars a meter for regular cotton fabric okay well that's not too bad um let's look at a few of these others let's take a look at their pre-cuts because you know how I like pre-cuts and again very nice they show you when something is sold out that is impressive I like that um, hmm all right well price wise you can see here it all ranges uh, about average they don't seem to have a lot of pre-cuts um, 17 items in this it says charm pack do they have jelly rolls it doesn't look like they have jelly rolls let's just click on one of these and see oh they have these though in um, different types oh that's very interesting I've not seen that on a website um, size 1.8 meter cut all right this okay this is very interesting okay um, pre-cut pieces $54 a 1 meter cut 1.8 meter cut I don't understand this $30 pre-cut pieces $30 a 1 meter cut so does that mean that this particular fabric you're getting for $30 1 meter of this they're cutting it like that this does not I'm just reading what's here okay this would take some study because I'm really confused by this and I don't like being confused um, let's just pick something else here um, let's take this charm pack $17.99 14 in stock and full details okay how many are in the pack five by five inch squares uh, 40 pieces okay um yeah I'm a little confused about how they do their pre-cuts they don't seem to have a lot to choose from all right let's take a look at this mystery pack this is interesting non flawed mystery bundles flawed and remnant mystery bundles well that's something a little different too collection it's called fluff again 
I am not sure what this sold by the meter, but piece size varies. You may get anything from a half a meter cut to five meter cuts depending on total meters ordered. No guarantees are made on which color size you'll receive. Okay, I don't know from the way they describe that whether I would be interested in something like that. I don't like surprises. Let's take a look at their subscriptions. So Essential Snob Box, Stash Stalker Snob Box, Shop the Box, and Stash Stalker Previous Month. Okay, let's let's look at the So Essential Snob Box. So, order will ship every month. Prepay for subscriptions, say 3%, 5334 Canadian. Size 2 meters or 3 meters. Join us on a creative venture with our monthly Sew Essential Snob Box. Level up your fabric intellect by experiencing a different garment worthy basics each month. Only high quality textiles here, no clearance or bargain fabrics on our watch. Knits or wovens, we love them all. This box will challenge you, this box will inspire you. Each month you will receive either two or three meters of fabric, a fun notion or few, and some local love. Fabrics could be one two meter piece, two one meter pieces, or one half meter and one half meter piece for okay this gets confusing join the fun on social media okay all charges will be the first of the month box ships okay so you're getting fabric and this one so essentials looks like it might be um let's go back in here um okay again i'm not much into subscriptions but you might want to check check it out stash stock or snob box Okay, I guess it's showing us here samples of what could be there. And let's see. Yeah, so it looks like it's got a variety of fabrics in it for this price. Okay. Well, that's uh, something. All right, so let's see. We've checked out fabric, things like that. What about their notions? Let's see what they're offering for notions. And they're all listed here. And it looks like they've got pretty much the standard kind of thing you would expect. Um, they sell irons. Let's check out patterns. Do we have a great selection? Well, they have categories for all of this. Well, 25 results. Not bad. Looks like they focus a little bit on the more modern looking types of quilts. Um, yeah, okay. That's fine. Let's go back up to what haven't we looked at? Do they have kits? Are those under notions? Face masks, fabric subscriptions. We're just going down the list here. Um, quilt kits, here we go. And they have about 10 quilt kits. Right off the bat, just looking at what they've got here, none of them. None of these are really thrilling me. They all look like they're strips. Let's just check one out and see here. Well, really? 85.69 for a bunch of strips. Okay, it's cuddle if you're into that, but really these, I don't think these are the kind of quilts that would appeal to me. They're all in strips. Yeah, not impressed. Not impressed with that at all. Okay, what else haven't I checked out yet? Um, I didn't really check out their Fat Quarter bundles, although I was in the pre-cuts, but let's just see. Okay, they have 16. All right, not a, a great selection, but, you know, 
there might be some here that would be nice. Um, okay. So, what haven't we checked out? We know they have a physical store. Oh, let's check out their sewing machines. So they sell Eversewn, which basically is owned by a bigger company, and I'm not sure who the company is. It could be Brother or Baby Lock. I'm not sure. Um, Missouri Star Quilt used to sell these machines too. They may still. Really though, they have one. They have one sewing machine. The rest are parts for that sewing machine. Okay, $279.99. Insured shipping is included. Um, okay, it's Sparrow 15. Yeah. I don't think really they're concentrating too much on selling sewing machines. Not someplace I'm going to for it. I wouldn't buy a sewing machine from anybody online anyways. Um, and they have gift cards. And samples and swatches. I'm not sure what that is. Let's just give that a check out here. Feeler samplers. Okay, I guess you can for five bucks or so um, check out some of the fabrics they send you it looks like a swatch kind of thing okay so my impression overall of this it has potential it's worth probably taking a look at um, oh they give you oh this is interesting they talk about our processing times or an estimation Unexpected large order volumes may cause delays and should be expected. Most up-to-date info will be seen here. So current processing time, three to five business days. Now shipping June 28th to 29th and processing next June 29th to 30th. Well, that's kind of interesting. They let you know if you order in those dates um, what they're processing. So let's see. They're processing June 28th to 29th. Well, that's pretty good right now. So yeah, they can probably make this three to five business days depending on how the postal service works. So overall, on the fabric snob, out of a rating of 10, this is something new I'm employing here, I would give them a six. Um, I don't think their selection is that great in terms of quilting. It's okay. Pre-cuts are a little lacking. Um, I'm not happy that uh, the fabrics that they are selling, looks to me, are primarily from the States. They don't have Northcott. Uh, but, you know, overall, I think it's worth checking out. So that's this week's online quilt store, The Fabric Snob. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Uh, just a reminder about Craft and Chat this coming Wednesday, July the 7th, and Stephen's Creative Birthday Bash this Saturday, July the 10th. Also, um, people, I need people to interview. All right? You've heard me ask for this before, but I'm serious. If I don't get people to interview, well, I don't have interviews to put up on my channel right and the ones i've done so far have all been absolutely fascinating and i'll let you in on something people say to me oh yeah you don't want to interview me because i'm not very interesting or i don't do anything that anybody would be interested in nope that's not true at all a couple of those people that i've interviewed said those exact words and their interviews were great um, I know their interviews were great because I've had comments come back saying how great they were. So everybody has something to say. Everybody has a journey they're on. Everybody is interesting. Why are everybody? Why is everybody interesting? It's because we're all different. That's what makes it interesting. And I love sharing your story, your creative journey story here on my channel. So please, please get over being shy. Get over the idea that you're being self-promoting or something like that. You're not. You're helping me out here. So please contact me. It's easy. Send me an email saying you'd like to be interviewed. I send you back some guide questions for you to look over and alter to suit your purposes. And, I, and we set up a mutually agreeable time and date. I create the zoom link send that to you away we go it's easy it's simple I don't bite so please consider it okay oh it also 
please consider sending me pictures of your creations with a little blurb too, because I'm running low on those. So I need some more. Okay, I think I've done enough begging. Um, if you are not a subscriber, a lot of you watch this and aren't subscribed to me. And I don't usually say this, but I'm trying something new. Please, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. Just click that button, you know how that works. And also hit the little notification bell. So every time I post a new one, you'll get a notification. Now you hear everybody say that. Does the notification bell work? No, it's hit and miss. Never figured it out yet. I subscribe to a lot of YouTube videos. I have the bell on and sometimes I get notifications, sometimes I don't. So that's not very reliable. But one thing that is reliable is subscribing. So yeah, I have never ever said that. It's the first time. And I don't feel comfortable saying that. But anyways, okay, rambling again. I hope you have a really good week. I hope you're feeling good. I hope the weather is good where you live. Um, and I hope you're being creative and happy with it all. So until next week, have a great one. Bye-bye for now.